Hi boys and girls and welcome back to another Springs Kids YouTube show. I'm Miss Melissa and I am so excited that you are joining me again today. Guess what we are going to be learning about today? Today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know, it's going to be so cool learning all about the Holy Spirit and what He does. But before we get into that, let's look at our thankful journals. I have mine right here. I hope that you're still filling yours out too. Remember, the reason why we do these thankful journals is so that we can look back at all of the blessings that God does in our life and we can thank him for them. It helps us just remember how faithful God is and how much he loves us and how much he cares for us. So make sure that each day you write something in your thankful journal that you are thankful for and that you can thank God for. And then when you come to church on Sunday, bring it with you and when I see it, I will give you points for prizes. Okay, now you know what time it is. It is time for us to sing and dance and praise Jesus. It's time for our praise party. Are you ready to sing and dance? Get up on your feet, get your moms, your dads, and anybody else who's home with you, and let's sing and praise God. Ready? Let's do it. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
boys and girls did you have a good time singing and dancing i did Woo! i love to praise jesus okay now that we have done our thankful journal so we thank god for all the amazing things that he does for us we have praised him and sang all about his goodness and his love and now it's time to learn more about him are you ready for today's lesson great today we are going to be talking about the holy spirit now you might be asking what is the Holy Spirit or who is the Holy Spirit? That would be a better question. So let's talk about that. God is three in one. It's a big word that we call the Trinity, which we will discuss in another lesson because that's a lesson all on its own. But basically what it means is that God is three in one. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which means that Jesus, even though we say Jesus is God's son, Jesus is God and Jesus' spirit is the Holy Spirit and he's God also. So it's three in one. God the Father, who is the creator of everything, and God the Son, which is Jesus, who came to earth as a baby and grew up as a human on earth and God the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus was crucified and was resurrected from the grave, he rose from the grave, he came back to life. When Jesus did that, he visited with his disciples. He was with them for many, many days afterwards, um, after he had been raised from the dead. And then he ascended, which means he went up into the clouds. He went back to be with God the Father in heaven, and he told his disciples that he was going to leave someone with them while he was gone. And that is the counselor, the helper, the Holy Spirit. So even though Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and then he left and went to heaven, he said that he would leave his spirit, his presence with all of the disciples. So when we ask Jesus to come and to um, to save us from our sins and to come and live in our hearts, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what lives and dwells inside of us. He's our helper. He's our counselor, which means he's the one who gives us good advice and wisdom and he helps us make good choices. So we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us grow. The Holy Spirit helps us learn more about God. The Holy Spirit helps us love like Jesus loves. We need his Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He's the one who gives us, like I said, wisdom. He is the one who takes fears away when we're scared about something, when we're sad. He gives us comfort and makes us feel better. He gives us peace when we're worried about something. And he's the one who gives us the ability to love one another and he gives us the ability to learn more about God, to have faith in God, to trust God. All of this comes from the Holy Spirit. He's the one who helps us. It's Jesus's spirit, God's spirit living inside of us. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power. He gives us power to live our life every day. He gives us power to pray for one another. Um, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the, the gifts of the Spirit, things like praying in tongues and speaking prophetic words and praying for the sick and seeing them get healed. All of these things come from the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit like hospitality, worship, teaching, preaching, all of these abilities that we have for God to do good things for God, compassion, mercy, um, things that you need to go in the mission field to tell people about Jesus, a big word called evangelism, which means we tell people about Jesus, sharing the gospel. We need the Holy Spirit's power to help us do that. So by having the Holy Spirit living inside of us, he is our helper. 
And in our Bibles, in the book of Galatians chapter 5, there is a couple of passages that talk about something called the fruit of the Spirit. And these are things that the Holy Spirit gives to us as we give our life to Him and ask Him to help us grow and to be more like Jesus. So it says the Holy Spirit pro produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So these are the things that the Holy Spirit gives us. He gives us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are things that if you are growing in these areas, if you are loving better, if you have more joy, if you have more peace, you have more patience, more kindness, more goodness, more faithfulness, more gentleness, and more self-control, then you know that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. It's how we can tell that we are walking with Jesus, that he really is living inside of us because we are connected with him and his Holy Spirit helps us. The helper helps us do these things. So, as you continue to grow in your walk with God, as you learn more about him, read your Bible and pray, and you will see that you, you have more of these things called the fruits of the Spirit. And that is one way that you can tell that you have Jesus living inside your heart. Now, in some places in the Bible, it talks about the invisible God or the unseen God. And in those areas, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. We cannot see the Holy Spirit, but we can see the work of the Holy Spirit. We can see what the Holy Spirit does. The Bible also tells us that people will know Jesus's disciples by the fruit that they produce. And this is what that is talking about. It's talking about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness and self-control. So people who follow Jesus should have these kind of characteristics. This should be the kind of people that they are. Okay, so now are you ready to learn more about the Holy Spirit with our friend Douglas? Let's watch this video. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And have you ever ridden in a plane, like flown through the sky in a plane? I got to ride in a plane once. Well, actually, I got to ride in a plane twice because we flew down to Florida to visit some of my my parents' friends, and uh, and then we flew back. So I guess I flew down one time and then back another time. But it was all within like you know a week and a half. Anyways, I was kind of nervous getting on the plane for the first time, and we you know we we have all the baggage stuff, and we got to you know crawl through this plane trying to get to our seats. And I sit down, and I got to have a window seat, and I I could see out the window, and I could see the the wing of the plane, and and I could. I could see the ground and, you know, as we're starting to take off, you know, it's kind of rumble, 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 rumbling. And uh, we get up and we get up into the sky and I could look down out the window and it was so cool. The world looked like a giant quilt. Like I could see the farms around my town and they, they looked like a big old quilt on the ground and I could see the clouds and we got to a point where we flew up above the clouds and we could see the clouds beneath us and, and it was it was just amazing. But at a certain point I was looking down and I could see the wing, and I kind of looked down into my seat, and I could see I was, you know, I was sitting on a seat. I was on something, right? But as I'm looking out at the wing, I'm realizing the plane is on nothing. It's flying through the air. And this, this idea just kind of broke my little brain. We were flying through the air, and we were supported by nothing. The plane was sitting on nothing, which is not exactly true. Because the plane is sitting on air, sort of. You know, it's flying through the air. It is using air to keep itself up. And you can't see the air, but the plane is definitely using the air. If the air wasn't there, you know, this plane, it wouldn't be able to get up off the ground. And you know, it's not just, it's not just that air is, you know, it keeps, keeps planes and birds up in the sky, but air keeps us alive too. You can't see it, but you breathe in and you breathe out all day, every day. The air you breathe keeps us alive, but you can't see it. Sometimes you can see stuff that it moves around. You know, if the wind blows and rustles some leaves, you see the leaves moving, but you, you don't see the air. And it's that way with God too. You can't usually see God, but he's there. And he's not just there, but he is necessary for life. And through him, we can do some pretty incredible things. You know, even more incredible than a huge plane flying through the air. Through God, all things are possible. And when you put your trust in something that you can't see, that's called faith. It can be hard to have faith in something or someone that you can't see. You know, when I started thinking about the plane just kind of floating in the air, I got kind of nervous because I... 
I, it, I realized that we were just floating in the air. But then I remembered, you know, how many other planes I'd seen flying and, and, you know, these scientists and engineers would not have built these planes if it didn't work. And just like there's plenty of stuff that we can see that lets us know that air is there, there's plenty of stuff that we can see that lets us know that God is there. We can trust in God because we can see what God has done in our lives. We can see what he's done in the lives of other people. We can see that a life lived the way God intended is a life well lived. The evidence of God is everywhere and we need him for our very lives. So my challenge today is that you would put your faith and your hope and your trust in the unseen God, the one true God. Because even though you can't see him, you can see God at work. The Bible says that faith is a confidence in things hoped for and the assurance of things unseen. You know, not only does, does God give us life, even though we can't see him, but if you can put your faith in God, if you can have faith even the size of a little mustard seed, anything is possible. Thanks, Douglas. That was really helpful in, in helping us understand more about the Holy Spirit. Okay, now, boys and girls, I have some questions for you. Now, remember, I want you to listen to the question, then pause the video and discuss it with your family at home, okay? So question one, what's something other than the air or God that you can't see but you know is there? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. Okay, question two. What are some ways that we can know God is with us? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. Question three. Can you give a time that you knew that God was with you? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. And question four. How can we help others know that God is always there? Pause the video and discuss that with your family. So there are lots of verses in the Bible that talk about the unforeseen God. Things that talk about the Holy Spirit helping us have faith. Faith gives assurance about what we can't see, meaning that our faith is the assurance in something that we put our hope in. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we put our faith and our trust in him. Our unseen God created everything. So God is the one who made everything, but we can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know that his spirit, his power is what created everything. Also, the unforeseen God is eternal, which means that he is going to live forever and ever and ever. He's an eternal being. He has no beginning and he has no end. He's always there. That is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus tells us that Blessed are those who believe without seeing. The disciples were super lucky because they were able to be with Jesus in person. They got to see him. They got to spend time with him. They ate meals with him. He taught them lots of lessons and he taught them about himself and about the Holy Spirit and about the kingdom of God. And they got to see Jesus come back to life. They got to see him be raised from the grave and they saw him ascend into the sky. They saw him go up into the sky, up into the clouds, back to heaven to be with the Father. So they had the opportunity to see Jesus. And because they saw all of these things and they saw the miracles that Jesus did when he healed people, when he made food multiply, when he turned water to wine. I mean, there's so many miracles that Jesus did through the power of the Holy Spirit that they believed that he was God's son. They believed he was the Messiah. They believed in him because of the things that they saw and what they learned from him. But we, as his disciples now, learn about him in the Bible. And we don't get to see him in person. We don't get to see him face to face. But we get to see the effects of his Holy Spirit. So Jesus actually tells us that we are blessed those who believe without seeing are blessed because we are putting our faith in him. We believe through faith and faith comes by hearing the word of God. So when we read our Bibles and we spend time in prayer, we ask Jesus to come into our hearts. Then we begin to see the Holy Spirit, the counselor, the helper, the Spirit of God comes and lives inside of us and helps us make better choices. It makes us new creations in Jesus, new people in Jesus. We have a new heart. We have a new understanding of God's love. 
That's what the Holy Spirit does. And he helps us every day draw closer to God. So all we have to do is ask. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. He won't make us do anything. We have to ask for his help. So we want to ask him to help us read our Bible. We want to ask him to help us pray. We want to ask him to help us love like he loves, to love one another. We want to ask him for all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to help us be more like Jesus. We want to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when we ask for these things, then the Holy Spirit gives them to us. He says that he will. He promises that he will. And that's who he is. So now I have a really fun object lesson that I want to do with you to help you better understand the power of the Holy Spirit and what that's like. So let's go outside and I'll show it to you. Okay, so for this object lesson, if you want to try it at home, you're going to need a ping pong ball and a hair dryer. All right, now the ping pong ball is going to represent us and the hair dryer is going to represent the Holy Spirit. When we follow him and allow him to guide us and lead us, watch what happens. So see, can you see the ball? You see how the Holy Spirit is keeping it moving. The power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Now see, if we follow the Holy Spirit, then we will go where he goes. So look what happens if we get too far off the path and we're not staying connected to the Holy Spirit. Whoop! We fall, right? We fall away from God. We fall, we can get into trouble. But if we stay connected and stay on the path with the Holy Spirit, there. Isn't that awesome? So now we can't see the Holy Spirit. We can't see the wind that's holding the ball and keeping the ball on that path. It's just like the Holy Spirit. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but He keeps us on the path that we're supposed to follow so that we can draw closer to God and closer to Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Alright, I hope you give this a try at home. It's a lot of fun. Let me know what you think. And now it's time for our memory verse. Today's memory verse is John 20, 29. Jesus said, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And that's John 20, 29. Are you ready to do it with motions? Jesus said, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who who believe without seeing me. And that's John 20, 29. And now it's time for us to talk to God. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for always being there. Please help us to better see you at work in our lives. And please help us to help others see you as well. Dear God, I ask that you would watch over every single boy and girl and their families, everyone who's watching this video, help us draw closer to you, fill us up with your Holy Spirit, and help us grow in our walks with you, help us grow in our understanding of you, give us the ability by the power of your Holy Spirit to spend time reading our Bibles and to spend time praying and talking to you and just spending time in your presence. We ask for your protection over all of us, Lord, protection over each boy and girl and their families this week and bring us back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun learning about the Holy Spirit and I hope that you spend time with him this week. I will see you again next Sunday.